What a lovely child. She looks just like me. And my wife is pregnant with our second one. What? Why are you here? Bringing his mistress and kid to my hospital and then asking, Why are you here? That's just unbelievable. I wish I could throw the same question right back at him. Why are you here? I'll make sure he regrets casually showing up at my workplace. My name is Bianca. When it gets a bit chilly, I find it so cozy in bed in the morning that I often sleep in, even when I'm 40. Today, I slept through my alarm and didn't wake up my husband, so I apologized profusely. No, it's my fault for sleeping in, he said with a smile. But I still felt bad because I had promised to wake him up the night before. Nowadays, I live a pretty laid-back life, but in my 20s and 30s, I was a busy internist, always on the go. My life changed a lot when I got married. Not just in terms of my career as a doctor. It was busy, and there were a lot of new things to get used to. But I thought I was living a happy life. Until that day. It happened in the 10th year of my marriage to Frank, when I was 35. We were high school classmates and dated for a while, but broke up when I left for college. Years later, we reconnected at a class reunion and ended up getting married. We shared a lot of interests and I think we had a pretty good marriage. But even after 10 years, we hadn't been able to have kids. We weren't infertile and we both wanted children. Maybe if we hadn't just left it to nature and had been more proactive, we could have had a child. But the truth was, I was too busy to even think about raising a child. I didn't want to have a child without being able to provide a proper environment, so we weren't actively trying to conceive. Then one day, I happened to see Frank looking at a picture of a child I didn't recognize on his phone. I stopped in my tracks and asked, Whose kid is that? Huh? Oh, it's my boss's kid. He just sent me the picture. Huh. He quickly closed the screen, so I couldn't see the face well, but the child looked about four or five years old. Maybe it's a professional habit to notice the physical traits of people rather than their faces. I chuckled to myself at the thought. Maybe he was also yearning for a child, staring at someone else's kid like that. I started to wonder if we should seriously consider trying to have a baby. But then the same thing happened again that Christmas. He was looking at a picture of a little girl holding a toy and laughing. It was probably the same child I saw before, the boss's daughter. Is there really a boss who frequently emails pictures of their child to their subordinates? Even if it was just parental pride, wouldn't it be more normal to show the photos directly at work rather than sending individual emails? Once I started thinking like that, my suspicions about Frank grew. And I started to wonder who that child was. My first thought was that it was his child from an affair. But I saw no signs of him cheating. Of course, I couldn't be sure since I worked night shifts and he could have been sneaking out then. But knowing how he always tidied up the room and took care of the laundry and meals when I was away, it seemed unlikely. He worked during the day and spent the evenings with me, or did chores when I was on night shifts. I didn't think he had time for an affair, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. So I took a day off without telling him, and decided to stake out near his office. Thinking I was foolish to waste my day off like this, I waited at a cafe in front of his office, sipping coffee. After a while, Frank left the office later than usual for a sales call. I quickly left the cafe and followed him. He went to an apartment, and when he rang the doorbell, a woman 
and a little girl came out to greet him with smiles. It was a girl from the photo, and I just broke down crying. But it was just a woman and a child coming out to greet him. There was no solid proof. Maybe he was just visiting a friend and her child. But my gut told me that the woman was his mistress and the child was his. I was probably right. That day, I lied to him that I was tied up with work and couldn't come home and stayed at a hotel instead. The moment I thought my husband might be cheating, I couldn't bear to breathe the same air as him. He seemed to be home, but he didn't doubt my lie at all and just said kindly, Don't work too hard. I even felt irritated by his warm words, wondering if I had been deceived by his superficial kindness all this time. I couldn't stand him anymore, seeing him as nothing but filthy, and I didn't even want to talk to him. Even after I returned home, the atmosphere was terrible. In front of me, he would say things like, You must be tired, poor thing. But whose fault was that? I used to appreciate his kindness, but now I couldn't feel that way anymore. Was this what it felt like to fall out of love with someone? Honestly, I had no idea about divorce at that time. Or rather, you don't research these things unless you're considering divorce. Nobody gets married with the intention of getting divorced, after all. After that, I started learning about the law and gathering evidence, steadily preparing for divorce. Having a detective do his work would take time, but surprisingly, I quickly found out about the other woman. My husband and his mistress, Myra, met in a cafe about a year after we got married. He fell for Myra, a waitress there, at first sight, and started visiting the cafe regularly for lunch. They began talking little by little, and though they didn't exchange contact information at first, keeping it strictly as customer and waitress, one night he asked her out for dinner. From there, they quickly became romantically involved. He mainly visited her house in between work, rarely going on dates, probably to avoid being seen. Every other week or so, the detective sent me detailed reports about my husband's affair. The more I learned, the less I wanted him in my sight. It was a necessary process to gather evidence, but it was tough. Reluctantly, I switched to mostly night shifts to avoid seeing him. Fortunately, he didn't suspect a thing. Thinking I just needed to go through with a divorce, about a month after the incident, a family walked into my consultation room, saying, Excuse us. Okay, Maya, be good. No, I don't want the medicine. Maya, a little patient who came in with a fever, was crying, not wanting to take the medicine she'd be prescribed later. Her mother tried to soothe her, while her father looked at his crying child with a loving gaze. They seemed like a perfectly happy family. If only the father wasn't my husband. Incredibly, my husband seemingly forgetting where I worked, came to my hospital with his mistress and their child. It goes without saying that I nearly crushed the computer mouse I was holding when I saw the chart. And he didn't even realize I was the doctor, busy doting on the child right in front of me. Look, daddy's here. No need to cry. He cooed in baby talk. What's with that baby talk? Isn't he embarrassed? Especially in public and in front of his wife? I almost wanted to lecture him. If you're going to cheat, at least hide it thoroughly. What a lovely child. He turned around with a big smile and said, Ride? She looks just like me. And actually, my wife is pregnant with our second. Wait, why are you here? The moment he saw my face, 
His expression froze, but I said with a smile, "Could you please keep it down in the hospital?" Uh, but this isn't your hospital, is it? Oh dear! Didn't I tell you I help out at this affiliated hospital twice a week? Did you forget? Frightened by my smile, his face turned pale, and Myra, his mistress, worriedly asked, "Are you okay? What a lucky girl Maya is to have such great parents." Ah, Myra replied, clearly confused about why I was suddenly praising them. She seemed unsure what to say, but managed a polite, "Thank you." Meanwhile, my husband was trembling and eventually collapsed to the ground. Honey, are you okay? You don't have a cold too, do you? Are you feeling sick? She asked him, but he couldn't answer. Interesting. Even my husband wasn't shameless enough to be called honey by his mistress in front of his wife and respond with, "Yes, dear." Is your husband okay? I asked sarcastically. Then my husband, with a forced smile and a strained expression, was sweating profusely and looking off into the distance. Seeing this, Myra suggested, "Hey, if you're feeling sick, why don't you see the doctor too?" That's a good idea. Maybe he should consider surgery to prevent having more children. That would be good not just for his health but for his life too. What? She looked at me, shocked, while he twitched beside her. Ah,、uh, don't make such a face, dear. I've known about your affair for a while now. What? My husband, who had been reacting like a broken robot, suddenly seemed to come back to life. He looked at me seriously and said, "I was gathering as much evidence as possible for a divorce to be in my favor." But it seems I won't need it now. <laughs> What's the matter? Too shocked to speak? Oh, looking at her up close, she really does resemble you. Such a cute child. I said with a smile that masked my anger. My husband was frozen stiff. Oh, wait, wait, wait! This doctor is. Myra began. Turning to my husband, who gave no response, but seemed to realize that I was his wife. I didn't know he was married at first. She suddenly started defending herself. Is that so? Well, my condolences, but you must have known at some point that he was married, right? Not going on dates and always meeting at home to avoid being seen, and still you had a child with him and continued the relationship without any apology to me. Regardless of how it started, you're equally guilty. I'm sorry. She apologized awkwardly, avoiding my gaze. My husband followed suit, hanging his head and saying, "I'm truly sorry." Maya, their daughter, looked on with a confused expression. Do you think I want your apologies after everything? Really? Huh? I mean, it's not like I'm so naive that I'll settle everything just because you two apologized. My colleagues here at work saw you bring your mistress and child here, so an apology isn't going to cut it. I said, sighing. He mumbled, "I really am sorry." In response, if a mere sorry was enough, we wouldn't need police or courts. Look at this nurse next to us, feeling awkward. What are you going to do about that, huh? I wanted to say all that, but I kept silent, not wanting to involve the nurse in our drama. It must be uncomfortable for her, caught in such a situation, seeing her boss discover the affair. I've said it before, but I don't need your apologies. Show your sincerity through the alimony. What? But I have kids, and you earn more than me. We don't need to bring money into this. So just because I earn more, I should refrain from receiving alimony and apology in monetary form? Isn't that absurd? 
You apologize with words, but refuse to pay? What a small-minded man. You brought this upon yourself, so pay up generously. You're so arrogant. You're just after money. I don't have to listen to such an ugly accusation. What else can you offer me right now? That would satisfy me. The only way you can show your sincerity is through money. Unless, of course, you want to be my housemaid for free for the rest of your life. But then you'd have to quit your job and have no income. Sounds like a tough choice, right? I could offer you my love, maybe. That's the last thing I need right now. I snapped. I thought he was joking, but he looked genuinely disheartened. No good, huh? He mumbled, crestfallen. After fathering two children with another woman, he still thought his love could win me back? Utterly delusional. Hearing this, Myra snapped. What? Love? What about me? You said I was the most important. She glared at him coldly. That's a different issue. He started mumbling again, but his excuses only fueled her anger more, almost to the point of explosion. Ugh! Just when we were finally getting to the point where you could divorce your wife, you should just pay the alimony and make a clean break. I decided to have the second child because you said you were going to divorce in the future. You keep saying you'll divorce but never follow through. You've done nothing about acknowledging the kids either. If you're going to be so indecisive, I'll make sure you acknowledge these children and get child support from you before I leave you. I'm a mother now, and I can't deal with your indecisiveness. As she ranted at my husband, he tried to calm her down, saying, Don't get so angry. But his weak attempt only added fuel to the fire. She heated up and was about to throw something at him, but the nurse and I stopped her. Anyway, after the divorce, whether you remarry your mistress or do whatever, I don't care. I'm not interested in you anymore. He looked dejected at my words. The idea of being discarded after having an affair must have been frustrating for him. More importantly, since you father children, you better act responsibility as a parent. Whether it's paying child support to Myra, marrying her, or showing some sincerity. This is not about you two. It's for the sake of Maya and the unborn child. Make sure you don't ruin their lives. Despite my anger, which he had never seen during our marriage, he seemed to understand and replied, I will take it to heart. After raising my voice in the hospital, I got scolded by the medical director, but I successfully divorced my husband. As I had declared, I received the alimony I asked for, and the property division went as I wanted. Frank did remarry Myra, and she seemed to have decided to keep a tight rein on him, thinking, I can't let this indecisive man do whatever he wants. He has to report to her if he's coming home late and is obligated to call before coming home. He hardly has any free time on weekends and is forced to spend it all on family activities. She manages all his salary. He has to bring lunch she prepares every day and he must declare any purchases he wants to make. This is all because of her love for him, to keep him from wandering off. But it seems he's getting tired of her overbearing love. Well, it's a relationship that started with an affair, so it's natural for her to feel insecure. It's his own fault. Still, he seems to care for the children, spending weekends on kindergarten events or going to amusement parks, so my wish for the children's happiness is fulfilled. I'm relieved. It would have been bitter for me if two children had become unhappy because of my divorce. I'm glad it didn't end in sadness. As for me, I was assigned to a distant hospital and ended up remarrying a man I met there. Now at 39, I'm the mother of a little girl I had with him. I had thought I would never get pregnant, especially since there was no sign of it with my former husband, so it was a big surprise. I used to think I didn't want children because I was busy or couldn't conceive, but now that I have her, she's so precious to me. My world revolves around her, and she's the first thing I think of in everything I do. Maybe it was just not meant to be with my ex-husband. There must be such a thing as fate. 
Maybe I didn't conceive with my ex-husband because we were meant to divorce. With my current husband, I got pregnant almost immediately after marriage, and everything has been surprisingly smooth. Maybe we were also destined to marry. It sounds like a dreamy girl's fantasy, but why not? Women, no matter their age, always long for romance.